Tell me this, what's been the most rewarding part of your job? Um, the most rewarding part of my job is to see others growing up with a company and, um, and just transferring that knowledge to... Uh... Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today our guest is Sargis Manat. Sakayan. He's the Regional Director of Operations for McNeil Hotel Company. He is going to come on and talk a little bit about things that's going on in his world. Tell us a little bit about him. And uh, we're going to have a great discussion. Hey, Sargis, how are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. I know, you know, you guys are busy. There's a lot going on. Um, but before we get into our discussion, I usually like to give folks an opportunity to talk a little bit about them, you know, where they're from, you know, kind of how they got into the hospitality space. So you are originally from where? I'm originally from Armenia. Um, Armenia is located in inside of Europe. It's a landlocked country. Um, used to be one of the Soviet Union republics, independent since 1991. Um, so I will tell about myself and how I end up in hospitality industry. Um, as other successful hospitality leaders uh, in the industry, I started from the bottom and slowly moved up. Uh, my first position was uh, Beltman in a four-star hotel in Yerevan, Armenia, where I was born and grew up and received my education, my first one. Uh, starting 2007, I moved to the U.S. Um, and ended up in Hilton Brand. Um, held different management positions um, from select service to full service and was building my skills uh, initially um, to become a general manager. And was very successful in, as a general manager. Um, and uh, with McNeil Hotel Company, where I'm at now, I had opportunity to grow to area general manager role and to the regional director of operations role, where I'm currently at. So you've had a nice, uh, a nice trek coming in to uh, the Americas in the late, I guess, 2007, and kind of moving through all the roles, the various uh, opportunities that were presented to you. And now you're in the regional director uh, operations for McNeil. How many properties does McNeil Hotel Company own? And they're, are they strictly management or are they owned as well? Uh, both. Uh, we own and we also manage uh, third party management as well. Uh, currently we have 27 properties and we are looking forward to grow in 2024. Um, the main focus is select service hotels uh, with extended stay touch. Yeah, that's and that's a great market right now because uh, you know as we look back now, everybody you know doing the uh, the analysis right post COVID, it it actually looks like the extended stay brand concept actually did very well during COVID throughout COVID. Um, so there, there's a big push from a lot of brands that don't have extended stay concepts. They're actually introducing them, and those that have extended stay concepts already are trying to figure out ways to keep those that are trying to introduce them out, right? They're trying to find a better way, a better product. So tell me a little bit about your day-to-day -day, um, your day -to -day life. What's, what's the day in the life for you as a regional director of operations? Um, it can be different. Uh, I work from my home office, and at the same time, I have to travel and visit the properties. Um, so there is no uh, typical routine. I'm very flexible, and I like to um, I like to organize my day prior. So when I am in the home office, uh, I'm more focused on um, different calls and connecting with my leaders um, via Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams. And when I travel. Um, I conduct property visit and engage with team members, um, not only just checking the property, we have a great checklist, we utilize different tools. Um, the training is also involved uh, during my visits because 
my main focus is uh, developing others um, as leaders and taking their skills to the next level and preparing them for their next step. So that's um, part of my day-to-day -day operations. Uh, the training is always involved. Yeah, it, and what's your, what's your biggest challenge uh, with your day-to-day -day operations? I know for a while, and maybe it still is, uh, a lot of the hotel companies were having a challenge with labor. Is that a big part of your day still or your, your situation or what's your biggest challenge? Um, still a challenge. Uh, labor is still a challenge uh, uh, and it's, it's a global challenge. It's not only in the United States. And we approach um, uh, differently uh, to overcome the challenge. Uh, Cross-training is a big part. Um, and uh, just for hourly roles, um, we understood that um, people cannot afford to have a full-time job in hospitality industry and be able to cover all their expenses, uh, personal expenses. So uh, approach was uh, to focus on part-timers as well. So we bring people from different um, industries. They are newcomers in hospitality uh, with people serving skills and we train them and um, actually part-time employees are helping us to uh, be successful nowadays. Yeah, and, and I think to your point, a lot of the the uh, guests that we've had on that are in the operations, the general managers, all the way up to the corporate office, they are trying to figure out that creative way to get uh, you know labor issues resolved, including you know part time, figuring out you know what's a nice, attractive way to get students that you know, might want to do something on a part-time basis, give them the flexibility to still go to school, you know, go to school and their class schedule, but then have a, a way for them to come in and make the money. And kind of like the same thing, even with like stay at home, you know, parents, you know, try to figure out a way to get that, you know, that, that attraction that, that can give them something to uh, say, Hey, yeah, I'll do it part-time. And then, you know, obviously, hopefully you hope it mushrooms into something where they're like, Hey, I can work more if you need more and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, now that that's a very uh, that's a very interesting puzzle that we're still all trying to solve in the hospitality space. Hey, hey, Sergeant, let me take one minute. I need to I need to take care of our sponsors, or they won't pay us, right? Uh, a quick word for our sponsors: THM View is this episode is being sponsored by Recover It. If you've experienced a home fire, a tornado, or other natural disaster, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, Recover It is a new app. It allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike, versus you trying to remember and recall all of your household valuables, jewelry, et cetera, to settle your claims with your insurance company. Check out the Recover It app today. You use the promo code on screen, you'll get a 50% off discount. And as always, we like to remind our viewers to follow us here on LinkedIn, Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can catch this episode with Sargis and others on, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. And as always, we appreciate your feedback. So Sargis, tell me this. What's been the most rewarding part of your job? Um, the most rewarding part of my job is to see others um, growing up with a company and um, and just transferring that knowledge to a uh, different generation, different uh, people, and training them, uh, preparing them for the next role. I think that's the most rewarding part for me. Um, of course, we are in the hospitality industry, and it is always rewarding to see uh, satisfied guests. Um, in my current role, I am also uh, focused on uh, owner's relationship, and it is um, um, very rewarding for me to see uh, our investors being satisfied, and they are happy, and they would like to sign additional contracts. Um, I'm always focused on a relationship uh, growth, in different um, areas, uh, it can be um, 
employee relation, guest relation, or owner's relationship. So I think that is the most rewarding for me to see everyone happy. And, and, that's, and that's a tough job. You, you kind of said it in an, easy, <laughs> in an easy tone, but that's a very tough job that you have there, you know, trying to, trying to meet the expectations, trying to hit the numbers, you know, trying to have the right attitude, trying to keep your employees motivated. That, that's not an easy task. Uh, it is not easy. However, if you like your job, you can make it easy and you can deliver um, as a motivational tool. So everyone uh, can uh, receive the message um, on a happy tone. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And so if you had to offer some advice to folks that were coming in or thinking about coming into the hospitality industry, what, what would you tell them? What, what advice would you give them? Um, that's a great question. Um, for the newcomers, um, my advice will be to understand where, where they are coming to. Hospitality industry is very challenging, as you mentioned, and we all know. At the same time, it is uh, rewarding. So they have to perform the job with a passion. Um, I think um, I'm going to use a quote. I'm not sure who is the author. Um, either you do with a passion or do not do it at all. So that I follow that uh, vision. And um, I will ask them to uh, definitely focus on um, creating and elevating their skills step by step to the next level relationship with their coworkers, which is number one important part and um, depends the level of the job uh, relationship with the, uh, with, with their guests and um, also management team. Um, when you move up, of course, you have to um, maintain that relationship with investors and owners. It's a long journey. And they have to be ready for um, different ups and downs and overcome all obstacles uh, one by one. And the most important, never give up. Oh, man, that, that's awesome. I, and I think that's a great, uh, that is a great testimony to uh, the hospitality space. You know, if it, it's kind of like if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well in the hospitality space. Because if you don't do it well, people will really pick up on it real fast, you know. <laughs> That's correct. Well, well, well Sargis, I want to thank you for your time today and giving us a few minutes. Um, you know, there was a good friend of mine over at McNeil that passed away. Uh, God, has that been 22, I believe? Uh, Mark Ricketts, who's a great guy. Mark came on the Test Hospitality Minute and chatted with us. And, you know, and I spent probably a good 30 minutes with Mark and I could feel the hospitality in his uh, persona and, and only knowing him in that little short period of time, he and I had a great conversation uh, and, and he would always, you know, we would check in with each other from time to time after that, uh, after that interview. And he's a great guy. And I learned that he, he passed away. Uh, I think it was late 22. And I just, Wanted to let you know that, you know, you guys have a, a great uh, role model over there that you guys can all strive to be like. It would be Mark, uh, Mark Rickard. He's a great guy. You are absolutely correct. Um, you shared the news, yes. Uh, for the past two years, um, Mark is not with us. However, his legacy is still alive. And I am one of them that follow his legacy. And he has been a role model for us exceptional leader who was in touch with um, property managers on day-to-day -day operations. Um, it is not very common in the hospitality industry. Um, everyone understands when you are in a high level, you are extremely busy and there's no enough time to just connect with leaders on the property level. However, Mark um, always uh, had routine i can tell like he was sending out daily emails motivational emails and they were not just a scheduled emails and uh one-way communication um we would just reply and have the conversation via email or he would pick up a 
phone and call to the property and talk to managers. Um, he was a role model for me. I learned a lot. I follow his steps and not only for me, for others as well. Exceptional leader um, who created a company um, with a vision, people serving people. And we follow that model and people serving people in all areas, as I mentioned before. And um, one of the most important part that Mark created um, number one uh, area that we have 10 key to success. One number one ten key, key to success is um, our associates are our greatest asset. And he really believed in that message. And we continue uh, the same way and we're trying to make him proud. Yeah, that, that's, that's awesome and well said. And that, that definitely sounds like uh it definitely sounds like Mark Rickett talking about his associates are the you know greatest assets to the company. So uh definitely a shout out to him and uh you know rest in rest in heaven for uh, good old Mark. Uh Sardis, I wanna thank you again uh for giving us a few minutes of your time. It's been great talking with you. Uh I'm gonna uh check in with you from time to time to see how things are going and probably watch you and see what your next big step is going to be. You know, maybe you may be running the company the next time I get to chat with you. Who knows? <laughs> thank you so much, Ted. It was a pleasure. Um, thank you for the invitation. And yes, I'm looking forward to grow in hospitality industry. And hopefully one day I can um, run a company, successful company and make a difference in hospitality work. That is awesome. Thanks again. THM View is this episode is being sponsored by Recover. If you've experienced a home fire, tornado, or other natural disaster, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, Recover it's a new app that allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike, versus you trying to remember all of your household valuables, jewelry, etc., to settle your claims with your insurance company much faster. Check out the Recover it app. Use the promo code on screen to get 50% off today. Again, this has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.